will discuss about the, the requirements of the parent roles. Okay, the important uh, requirement of the parent roles is about the uh, pyrogens. So, what are pyrogens? Basically, the substance substance that can generate pyrexia okay substance that can generate pyrexia see here the name generation of the pyrexia generation of the pyrexia is nothing but the substance is called pyrogen so now what kind of substances that can cause this pyrexia and what is pyrexia so pyrexia is nothing but increase in body temperature increase in body temperature this response we can call it as a fever right if body temperature increases we can call it as a fever that means pyrogen causes fever pyrogen causes fever okay so in the parent terms are injectables so what we are doing so we are injecting the formulation directly into the systemic circulation we are injecting the formulation directly into the systemic circulation so there is no barrier to protect so that's why we need to check this pyrogens before this injection release into the market right before it release into the market we need to check whether this formulation contains pyrogens or not that is mandatory right if pyrogens are present what happen if patient he will take this injection it contains pyrogen it will cause fever to the patient okay so that's why there is a requirement there is a requirement we need to check the pyrogens before before the formulations are entering into the market parental formulations we need to check the pyrogens okay now so what kind of substances that can cause this pyrexia basically the substances from bacteria substances from bacteria that can cause this pyrexia so now how many types of bacteria are there generally we have two types of bacteria gram positive as well as gram negative there are two types of bacteria so the metabolite the metabolite the metabolite of gram positive bacteria we can call it as a exotoxin exotoxin the metabolite of gram negative bacteria we can call it as endo toxic and if you check the potency so exotoxins are less potent in nature endotoxins are more potent in nature and chemistry chemistry of exotoxins are protein in nature and these are lipopolysaccharide in nature lipopolysaccharide in nature so because of their more potency because of their more potency this gram negative bacteria metabolites those are nothing but endotoxins these are more potent and these are endotoxins majorly this endotoxin are more potent gram negative bacteria metabolite is the substance is the substance so that can cause pyrexia that can cause pyrexia so this endotoxin it is more potent and it can cause pyrexia that's why we can call gram negative bacterial metabolites are called pyrogens these are nothing but pyrogens so the pyrogens are in which nature lipopolysaccharide in nature so many times they asked in the examination gram negative bacterial metabolite chemistry it is in lipopolysaccharide in nature 
and its potency it is more potent and its name endotoxins and in the drug inspector they asked about the gram positive bacterial metabolite chemistry it is protein in nature we can call them as exotoxins because of their least potency this does not cause any pyrexia so that's why we can call them as pyrogens we cannot call them as pyrogens pyrogens are nothing but gram negative bacterial metabolites so now fine so the gram negative bacterial endotoxins that can causing this pyrexia that can causing this pyrexia we can call them as pyrogens we can call them as pyrogens so we need to identify these pyrogens we need to identify these pyrogens before this formulation parental formulation releasing into the market so what are the tests are there to identify the pyrogens so that we need to discuss So, presence of pyrogens, presence of pyrogens, presence of pyrogen in formulation. So, majorly which kind of formulation? In injectable formulation. Presence of pyrogens in formulation can be determined by two tests are there one is in vivo test and another is in vitro tests so in in vivo test the animal we will use it is nothing but a rabbit we will use rabbit as a experimental animal in the in vivo test and here one crab we will take one crab that is nothing but a limulus polyphemus limulus polyphemus so it is a crab so basically we will use these two experimental animals in in vivo we will use rabbit in in vitro we will use crab limulus polyphemus okay so in rabbit test what we will do basically So this is the median, median cubital vein, so it is a ear vein, so many times they ask in the examination in which vein we are injecting the formulation, we will inject our formulation to this vein slowly, median cubital vein and before injecting, before injecting we will check body temperature that is T1 right so after injecting we will check body temperature that is T2 okay we will keep a thermometer inside the rectum we will keep thermometer inside the rectum and we will monitor the temperature the difference between this temperature T2 minus T1 right it should not be more than 0.6 not more than 0.6 so if it is single rabbit in one rabbit it should not be more than 0.6 and it should not be not more than 1.4 in group of three rabbits if we will take a group of three rabbit we will sum the change in temperature so that should not be more than 1.4 these are the limits in case of a rabbit in vivo tests so where we will inject this formulation ear vein so what are the limits of temperature not more than 0.6 and not more than 1.4 that means this formulation is non pyrogenic so there are no pyrogens there are no pyrogens okay coming to the in vitro test in in vitro test we will take 
limulus polyphemus limulus polyphemus it is a crab okay so we can call it as also tachypleus tridentalis tachypleus tridentalis see here how it looks like So there are three dents, tridentalis, right? It is a tridentalis. One, two, three. So it is a crab. So this is the blood vessel of the crab. And the shape of this crab looks like horseshoe. So that's why we can call it as horseshoe crab. This crab is also called horseshoe crab. So, we will collect the blood cells from this crab. So, those blood cells are called amoebocytes because there is no shape for the blood cells of this particular tachypleasis. So, like amoeba, there is no shape for that blood cells. We can call them as amoebocytes. And then we will lyse it. Means we will destruct the blood cells. We will destruct that blood cells and we will collect the material inside the blood cells. Okay. That's why this reagent is called LAL reagent. LAL reagent. That means limulus. L means limulus. A means amoebocyte, L means lysate, limulus, amoebocyte, lysate, this is the reagent, okay. When we will mix our, when we will add our formulation, when we will add our formulation with this LAL reagent, with this LAL reagent, there are two observations. If you add the formulation to the LAL reagent, if any gel formation or there is no gel formation. There are two chances. Gel formation, you can observe. No gel formation, you can observe. Okay. If you observed, there is a formation of gel, means pyrogens are present. Because pyrogens, pyrogens are endotoxins. They interact with this limulus amoebocyte lysate reagent and they will cause gel formation. So, pyrogens are present. If there is no gel formation means pyrogens are absent. Pyrogens are absent. Okay. And uh, pyrogens are also called endotoxins. Endotoxins. Okay. That's why this test uh, is in vitro test is also called bacterial endotoxin test. Bacterial endotoxin test or BET test. We can call it as BET test. And we are using LAL reagent. It can also called LAL test. LAL test. So, this is about the presence of pyrogens in formulation detected by in vivo as well as in vitro. In vivo we will use rabbit. In in vitro we will use crab. Okay. This is the explanation of it. Okay. Fine. So, if formulation pyrogens are present, pyrogens are present in the formulation. So, what we can do? We need to do depyrogenation. We need to perform depyrogenation before developing the formulation. Depyrogenation. So, this depyrogenation, how we can do temperature and time. So, the temperature around we will use. 640 degrees centigrade for 1 minute and 320 degrees centigrade for 3 minutes. You can depyrogenate the, you can depyrogenate the containers whichever used for the formulation of the parenterals. And if you use 180 to 210 degrees centigrade for 4 hours. 